We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. I want to talk with you today about a topic that can be very difficult to figure out simply because of the subtleties and the, the hidden elements that are in this topic, and that is the covert narcissist who's also a master gaslighter. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken with people who will say, well, it was only after a considerable amount of time that I realized this person I was dealing with was a narcissist. And that's because covert narcissists don't necessarily show themselves to be that right away. Now let's keep in mind that narcissism in general is, uh, is identified by the need to be in control, real strong control needs, low levels of empathy, lots of exploitive, manipulative behavior. They operate with an alternate reality, meaning we do things my way and I don't care what everybody else says. They want to be superior. And when you have that grandiose open narcissist, they don't leave a whole lot to the imagination. But the covert narcissist is known for their lack of grandiosity. Uh, they're not uh, showy necessarily and they have that look at me kind of mentality. Sometimes they can come off as mellow or just kind of blending into the pack. They may be a little bit shy or they just may seem to be uh, at first glance kind of pleasant and friendly and all the rest. But over time, you realize there's something insidious that's going on that keeps repeating itself. And then when we talk about gaslighting, we're talking about uh, the tendency to try to create confusion in the other individual. So the covert narcissist wants you to feel confused about your truth and your perceptions. And so it's their way of trying to keep uh, an edge over you. Now, the, the covert narcissist can, uh, can be every bit as self-absorbed as any other form of narcissist. They're users of people. You just may not know it at the time. Uh, over time, you begin realizing these individuals don't have a whole lot of depth. They may give you the impression they do, but uh, they have a lot of black and white, shallow, self-serving kind of thinking that they operate with. They honestly believe they're better than you, but their, their haughtiness can be a quiet haughtiness. They can be very thin-skinned. <laughs> if, if anything is spoken that they deem to be unflattering, it, it offends them greatly. They can be difficult to coordinate life with. I mean, it could be that their timeliness is not what you want. They may not be reliable in the way they do a task, or if, if you think you have an agreement with them, they wind up doing something else. And it's just their way of saying, uh, no, we don't do things your way. It's all about me, uh, and my ways are always better than you. I just don't sometimes just don't feel the need to communicate it out loud with you. Now, it, it, as you engage with these people, it's very interest, uh, It's very common for you to uh, to eventually walk away thinking, "Have I done something to offend this person?" Or they're constantly seem to be upset with me. What, what do I need to do? And that's the gaslighting. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go through seven common scenarios or common uh, uh, patterns that these people can get into that's part of their uh, covert gaslighting. And as I go through each of these seven, I want you to see if this is something that you can uh, identify with. And I specifically want you to notice how uh, its, in, uh, its intent is to keep you guessing about yourself. Now, one of the most common things that these covert narcissists will do is they want to play the role of the victim. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's suppose that your preferences deviate from theirs, or maybe you have a disagreement with them, or you have a need to change plans. I mean, those are very common things that happen in any relationship. The victim covert narcissist, instead of saying, well, help me understand where you're coming from, they're going to think, why are you doing this to me? That's their victimization. And, and in doing so, it's their way of implying there's something wrong with you. Now, do you see the gaslighting as they take that victim's mindset? Uh, the implication is, yeah, every time I have to do something with you, you just keep coming up with some reason to make my life miserable. I, I just don't know what to do with you. And you're over there thinking, well, but I had good intentions. And the narcissist is thinking, not really. I didn't see it. 
Or a second tactic that they might use is they can, uh, they can offer minimal gratitude for the positive gestures that you bring to the relationship. Uh, let, let's say you've done them a favor or you've been very helpful or there's some sort of a, uh, a, a, an assistant that you've offered that was unsolicited and you're being really nice to them. They might say, mm, thanks. <laughs> That's kind of it. Uh, they can't lean into happiness with you. Uh, they, they may give minimal acknowledgments, but you see, this is part of their lack of empathy rather than thinking, wow, that was really nice. And, and I can see what was behind your gesture. Way to go. They don't want to. They, 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 uh, uh, they're going to keep a certain form of disconnect with you. The gaslighting is you can walk away thinking, well, did I do something wrong? Or, uh, they, they didn't seem to be too happy with that. What does that mean? And you can start second guessing yourself, which is the name of their game. A third illustration is they'll frequently turn down offers for positive connections or experiences with you. Uh, let's suppose that you want to go and do something out in public or you want to, uh, to, to uh, in, enjoy a favorite kind of thing inside the home or some, something of that nature. And they may say something like, nah, not some other time. And then later on, they'll, they'll complain about, well, we don't even have enough things to do with each other now, do we? And they, they, they gripe about the fact that they're not connected to you. And you're over there thinking, well, I, I think I've offered. Uh, it, it, is that just not enough? And they're over there thinking, now you just, you're just, you're selfish. <laughs> so that's the gaslighting. They want you to question your reality. Or a fourth ta tactic that they can often use as part of their covert gaslighting is that your good achievements or your positive experiences are minimized. Let's suppose that you have something that's really good that's happened to you. It may be that you want to say something about a, a kid of yours. Hey, my son did this and it was really a great day. Or it may be that you have a funny story that you want to tell or something happened well at work or with somebody that you had a difficulty with, but you had a nice breakthrough and you're trying to share it with this person and they can say, oh, how about that? Or anybody can do that or, hmm. Okay, and then they change the subject. And you're over there left thinking, well, I tried to tell you something that was upbeat. And uh, uh, these gaslighting covert narcissists are skilled at finding bad in that which is good, or at least they minimize it. And you think again, the gaslighting, you know, maybe it wasn't all that great. Maybe I said something that offended them. That's what they want you to think. Or uh, a fifth thing that they might do, they might turn down plans or activities with you, and then they'll do a very similar activity with someone else. So you may say, hey, I've got such and such coming up this weekend, want to join me? And they may say, no, nah, I've got a lot going on. And then later on, you find out that someone else called them and offered to do something. It's like, yeah, they jumped on it in a heartbeat. And your thinking is, well, you know, why, why, why that person but not me? Uh, do you just not enjoy time with me? And the, the gaslighting that the covert narcissist can do is, well, it's not what you think, or you're always reading something into it. They want you to think, again, there's something wrong with your interpretations. Or a sixth tactic that they can use is they can be masters at eliciting sympathy unnecessarily. Let's suppose that something in that uh, narcissist day went wrong and they, they, they're just kind of complaining like, man, I have had a terrible day. And you talk to them and they kind of uh, go, uh, go about explaining or maybe a plan fell through and they're upset. But then as you hear what they're saying, it's like, well, this is stuff that everybody deals with. It may be something at work didn't go well or with a family member, it didn't play out well. But instead of saying, we'll figure it out. Uh, it's like, no, it, it's not good. And then if you try to offer encouragement, uh, then it's like, yeah, you just don't understand. And that's the gaslighting. You just don't understand. Uh, I want your sympathy, but why do I even bother saying things to you? The implication is you don't know life very well like I do. That's, uh, that's the confusion part. Or how about this last, this seventh illustration? And that is um, these gaslighting uh, covert narcissists simply don't enter into experiences that would naturally elicit an emotional reaction. I remember one person who had a, a family member who died and uh, they spoke about it to this uh, covert narcissist and the, the narcissist said, no, I'm so sorry. 
That's it. No follow-up questions. No, how's all this going? Or how is this impacting you? Or tell me about the circumstances. Uh, it could be that, uh, that something good happened to you. And rather than entering into that experience, uh, it's like, okay, well, you know, that happened to me last week and, and they, they minimize. And, and that's the lack of empathy. But the gaslighting part is you're left thinking, do you just not care about me? Am I just not that significant? And again, that keeps them in their place where they feel like they're better than you. So as you are able to see this pattern and, and tendency, uh, let me offer just a few thoughts about how you can respond and then we'll wrap. And that is first and foremost, consider the source. These are individuals who don't really want to engage well in relationships because keep in mind, one of the things that narcissists, especially uh, covert narcissists, fear greatly, and that is they fear being vulnerable. They don't want to open themselves up. They don't want to connect in a way where uh, you know their deepest, darp darkest issues. And so they're, they're fear-based people. And by keeping you confused, that allows them to kind of stay on the outside looking in. And then uh, another thought is, Whatever you do, do not plead your case with a covert gaslighting narcissist. You know, why are you being so moody? Or it'd be nice to get a smile from you every now and then. Don't go there because uh, you know what they're hearing? I have another opportunity to gaslight you because that's what they do. Instead, know your truth about yourself. They want you to feel confused about you, <clears throat> but when you know that you have good character and good intentions, let that be enough and you're going to need to separate yourself off. Uh, the, the, the most difficult aspect, and this goes back to my opening comments, of dealing with the covert gaslighter is up front, you tend not to realize what's going on until you're deeply into it because there's so many hidden elements and uh, you know nuanced kind of ways that they're communicating with their uh, hidden messages. But ultimately, you're going to need to keep your distance. Once you're on to it and you see it, it's like, okay, I can't afford to go in there. And up, uh, unfortunately, I can't really afford to care that much. Instead, uh, uh, keep in mind, you know, the people I need to hang out with and get my good vibes from are those that are on Team Healthy. That's the team I'm on. And if the narcissist can't join me there, so be it. I'm not going to enter into their game of confusion. I'm on to you. And I do hope that videos like this give you some good insight and awareness that you can use in your personal life. That's why we do this. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. And by the way, I think when you hit that subscribe button, a bell will come up and hit that so that the notifications can come. Uh, we'd like to keep you apprised of more videos. If you have a need to talk uh, about these kinds of things with a counselor, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Obviously, that's my career. That's what I do. If you have someone in your general area, I would encourage you to seek that person out. And if you don't, we have a link below to a sponsor that offers online counseling. It's a whole team of licensed professional experienced counselors that can help you. And if you need to, you can use that link and they'll, they'll be there for you. In addition, we have our, our uh, uh, website, survivingnarcissism.tv, drlescarter.com, also my free to be. Uh, video workshop and class. So it's very extensive and uh, we put a lot of effort into putting it out there. Uh, six different modules with many different lessons. And if that's something you'd be interested in, uh, there's a link below for that. In addition, we have uh, links for our books and I think we even have some new t-shirts and mugs. So uh, check that out too. Don't get caught in the, uh, the covert narcissist game playing. Uh, know who you are, know your truth and live in it. <clears throat> and then when they imply you're not... Uh, um, you're not doing things well enough, consider the source and then move on with your confidence and your self-respect intact. That's what I want for you.